wanted to protect the children. That's what I've done for my life. That's what I dedicated my life to. And I do not think, and I don't see the confusion that you've spoken about. I do treat quite a few children who have um, both gay parents and married gay parents. And, and the statistics also bear it out that there's no more increase in confusion, gender confusion, life confusion, morals confusion, among children of gay parents and married gay parents versus straight parents. I think but let me say this, Robert, you're, you're a psychiatrist, so you're a man of science. You practice in Manhattan or New York City, correct? I practice, I, I practice outside of Manhattan, yes. But you practice in a rather liberal community. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I, as an epidemiologist, would say that the sample that you are using for your, for your decisions is a rather limited or skewed sample. It might be. I also do, I, I like to, I believe as being a person of science that I should keep up with what's being published and being written in science. So I do read the journals, I subscribe to them all, and I read them religiously. And the studies that are coming out are showing the same thing that I'm seeing. I would agree, I live in a liberal community, um, probably 20 minutes from my house, the Clintons live, who I would not vote for, by the way, but 20 minutes from my house, the Clintons live. So. All right. So you live in you live in Westchester, which is a very uh, uh, affluent liberal area, and you're drawing your conclusions based on that. But now I think you're going to widen your statement by saying the literature also supports that. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But, I, I, but Robert, come on. Let's be clear. You know, and I know that peer-reviewed literature is fundamentally flawed as well. They're going to select articles which support the position of the of the editor of the journal. And you know, science today is not what science was when you went to medical school. Fortunately, you are right on that, too. It is very skewed. Half the medicines that they actually say that work don't work because the drug companies are paying for the, the study. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think you and I would argue on too many things. You want a lot of things. I would just point out that I, I do not see it as being a problem for the children that I have worked with. That's fair I, enough. I, and by the way, you have, a wider, you have a wider opinion than I do in, in the sense that I don't work with children. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'll tell you, my bias is actually bigger than yours. I really think it's more, if you're good parents, that's the issue. And if you treat your children well and you bring them up to be polite, you bring them up to um, respect their adults, respect their elders, you, you bring them up with traditional values, the fact of it being two females or two males really does not affect the children. It's the quality and the personality of the parents that is far more important. And that's my view, and I'm gonna... And, by the way, and I agree with you a thousand percent, but that's not the issue. The issue is redefining what the word marriage means, and that's all the Supreme Court justices are focused on, which is the redefinition of the word marriage. That's my own personal belief, that I think that that's okay. I'm more speaking to how I see it affecting the children, and I don't think it's an issue. I think if you're a good parent, that's more of the issue than being gay or straight. I think you're right by the way, because we've all seen horrendous hetero parents. I mean, it's not all one way or the other. We've seen horrendous gay parents as well. But we've also seen the case where children are raised by gay people who wouldn't have been raised by anybody if it wasn't for them. I mean, that's the truth of today as well. So this is not a clear-cut, open-and-shut case, is it? That's why we're discussing it. That's why America is arguing over it. Robert, yeah, isn't that true? It's going to redefine our society in a lot of ways, and I think it's far more important than, you know, round-the-clock Baltimore on CNN, which is driving me insane, so I'm glad you're talking about this. I well, yeah, I was going to ask you, you're a busy psychiatrist, yet you have time to call the Savage Nation. Quite an honor. I've been wanting to for a while. <laughs> it's my first time. Actually, I was... how, 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 much do, how much do I owe you for the time you've spent speaking with me? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Other places... then, then I'll send you a bill. <laughs> All his Not because we can't look we can't talk about Baltimore the only reason the news is running it is because there's things on fire and then they can show it but talk radio is about ideas it's not so much about images that's the difference between talk radio and television they can't beat us on ideas because they don't have ideas all they have is images yeah, I spend much more time listening to talk radio than I do watching television because of the well I I'm thrilled that people of education who may disagree with me on gay marriage or other issues, still find it worth their time. I really am, and I'm going to send you a, a gift, just as I sent Kate. It'll come in a plain brown wrapper so it doesn't shock any of your uh, liberal uh, patients. It'll be my, my new novel called Countdown to Mecca, which I think you're going to find you will agree with, <laughs> by the way. Quite well. 
I will read it. And that, Doctor, I, thank you very much for calling the Savage Nation. It's uh, 20 minutes after the hour. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage. That's what we're talking about. And the Supreme Court is talking about it. Their decision is going to have long-lasting effects. And I, I will tell you that the conversation I had with the um, lesbian woman, I'm sorry, I don't know if you can use the word, but lesbian, I don't know if that's even appropriate anymore, but from Louisiana was a great, I mean, this is a high point in my radio show in the way it evolved, the conversation. And we're going to MP3 it and put it on michaelsavage.com so you can re-listen to it and share it with people. Because I am so sick and tired of being typecast. I am sick and tired of being turned into what I'm not by the haters that I want to put that up on my website. It's that simple. I mean, you can disagree with me, but I'm not who you say I am. Believe me. Here's an email I just got on it from a listener. And when I said, what is your position on gay marriage? I, this came through the producers. And this writer says, I think it's unnatural. And everyone knows it is in some level, on some level. But I think the government should get the heck out of marriage and we should have a flat tax to make everything simple. Then marriage will be according to your church as it should be. And there will be no reason for anyone to argue about it anymore. Other rights like hospital visitation and whatnot can be handled with power of attorney and other legal documents. That's, I think that's pretty much a rational liberal position, incidentally, and probably a rational conservative position as well. And I don't think you have to go one way or the other. I have gay people on the, on the line who want to talk about it. We'll get them. We'll have people who are vehemently opposed to gay marriage for religious reasons. We'll get to them. And we'll get to you eventually on the Savage Nation. I don't have any open lines. I took a chance saying I'm not doing Baltimore. I'm not doing the news of the day. I'm going to do this because this has been around a long time, this argument. And their decision is going to come down. And when it does, you're going to see the, the effects it has on our society. They're going to be long-lasting. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Picture the woman in the white dress, the man in the tuxedo. They walk down the aisle. It's something that all parents look forward to for their children. And you know how many people have said that they were denied that when a child died or was killed. They denied the graduation. They were denied the marriage. It's a uh, transition. It's a uh, a fundamental element of American life. And now we're being asked to redefine what marriage is. We have been asked. Actually, we've been told to redefine it, not been asked. We've been demand, demanded that we redefine it by the radicals in the gay community. And now, of course, they have their day in court where it really matters, which is the, the Supreme Court. And we'll soon find out which way it goes. According to even CNN, the Supremes are tilting against redefining marriage. And I want to play for you uh, the, the conservative on the court, one of the conservatives, Sam Alito, where he then changes the argument to the issue of polygamy. He says, basically, that if we approve of, if we redefine marriage to being between two men or two women, then what's to stop people from polygamy? Listen to clip 31. Well, what if there's no, these are four people, two men and two women. It's not, uh, it's not uh, uh, the sort of polygamous relationship, polygamous marriages that existed in other societies and still exist in some societies today. And let's say they're all, they're all consenting adults, highly educated. They're all lawyers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what would be the ground under, under the logic of the decision you would like us to hand down in this case? What would be the logic of denying them the same right? Number one, I assume the states would rush in and say that when you're talking about multiple people joining into a relationship, that that is not the same thing that we've had in marriage, which is on the mutual support and consent of two people. Setting that aside, even assuming it is within but, the but, fundamental well, right. Well, I, I don't know what kind of a distinction that is, because a, a marriage between two people of the same sex is not something that we have had before. Okay, well, we know where, he, he, you know, we know where he's coming from, so to speak. So this is a fascinating topic, and I'm very lucky that we can present it today 
because it's going to be ongoing for a little while. Where do the candidates stand on gay marriage? Senator, Texas, Senator Ted Cruz, would he attend the same-sex wedding? Unclear. Position on gay marriage opposed. Florida Senator Marco Rubio, would he attend the same-sex wedding? Yes. Position on gay marriage opposed. I'm going to go down the list. I did this work for you because it's an important piece of work. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, who's my pick thus far, would he attend the same-sex wedding? He has been to a reception. Position on gay marriage opposed. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, would he attend the same-sex wedding? Unclear. Position on gay marriage opposed, but open to granting legal rights for same-sex couples. That's the libertarian approach, which I agree with, by the way. And he said you probably could have both, which is the traditional definition of marriage, and the issue of gay marriage should be left up to the states. But he said then you could also have the neutrality of the law that allows people to have contracts with another. Very clear. Mike Huckabee. I don't know. He's not going to, but ever. Uh, I, I don't even want to read Huckabee. He's not a serious contender. I mean, he's got some. Jeb Bush, former governor. Would he attend a same-sex wedding? Unclear position on gay marriage opposed. New, Go New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Would he attend the same-sex wedding? Unclear. Position on gay marriage? Opposed. Ben Carson, a, a brilliant man, a wonderful man, a, neuro, a pediatric neurosurgeon. And he got there not by affirmative action, but by brains. You cannot uh, fake being a pediatric neurosurgeon. You can't advance someone in pediatric neurosurgery who's not, who's not competent. It's uh, not like sociology or, or, or gender studies. Ben Carson, retired neurosurgeon. Would he attend the same-sex wedding? Unclear. Position on gay marriage, opposed to changing definition of marriage, but open to granting legal rights to same-sex couples. Well, there you go. That's interesting. Rick Perry, former Texas governor. Would he attend the same-sex wedding? Probably. Position on gay marriage, opposed, but it's a secondary or tertiary issue. That's interesting. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. I don't know where this creep came from. Bernie Sanders has always been... Like an anomaly, the guy is from Brooklyn, heavy Brooklyn accent. He, he finagles the Vermonters into being a, a senator, declares himself an open socialist. Now suddenly he's running for the presidency. He has less of a chance than my dog Teddy does. But nevertheless, would he attend the same-sex wedding? Yes. Position on gay marriage supports. All socialists support uh, gay marriage, by the way. All of them. Hillary Clinton, do I have to tell you what her position is? I mean, is, is that a necessity for me to tell you what her... So we know where the, the battle lines are drawn. And um, we'll take some more callers on this. WFNC Radio. Steve, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your position? Well, um, thanks for having me, Mike. Uh, I'm gay, and uh, I oppose gay marriage uh, because it just it doesn't make sense uh, from an economical standpoint. Uh, it doesn't make sense from a romantic standpoint. Um, I don't understand how a certificate comes into play when you're talking about a commitment between two people. Um, I am in a relationship, and it, we, we never talked about having a ceremony or anything like that, but we're happy. Um, and if things did, uh, and, and I think people need to think about this, um, from my community, think about this. Right now, we don't have to go to court. We don't have to deal with property issues. If we want to separate, we split our property, and we go our separate ways. Um, that is a libertarian um, uh, environment, you know. That's and we're we're dealing with now when it comes to like healthcare, uh, marijuana. Um, there seems to be like this desire by uh, the courts and the government to codify everything. And we are the last community that has the freedom to live as we want to without having to file uh, some sort of paperwork in the courthouse. So you're actually saying that marriage would somehow give you less freedom as a gay man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the commitment is there. Now, when, if, if a commitment is... A commitment has to be voluntary because you can have a certificate and, and, and kind of renege on that, um, on that commitment. You know what I mean? Like, you, straight people cheat on each other. Uh, gay people cheat on each other. Um, what's the certificate? You know, well, that means nothing in the grand scheme of things. Um, now, and, and just like the last point... The last point I want to make about this is I don't like being judged, and I'm sure that the people in my community don't like being judged. So let's stop putting these lawsuits in the system and asking America, okay, to go to the polls, 
to and make a judgment on our lifestyle. We don't need. Look, I, I'm a look. You got to.